right, guys. Let's see if the second fucking time will work. I just recorded this entire fucking rant. <clears throat> and then I got confused which video card I had just recorded the rant on, and I erased it. Whole fucking thing. I had it on there, and then I had two video cards, and I put the wrong video, you know what I'm saying, and then I erased the entire fucking rant. Uh, anyway, well, let's see if the second time is a charm, because I wasn't real happy with it anyway. I guess it was the universe uh, telling me, uh, Hammond, <clears throat> you need to do that one over again, because, you know, when you do a rant and then you think of a couple of things you left out, so this, I guess, this is my revised edition. So anyway, <clears throat> for the second time uh, this morning, it is a spectacularly gorgeous, and I do mean over-the-top beautiful, Monday morning here in paradise in the end time, somewhere around August 16th or 17th. So uh, now, that I'm, now that I'm fucking pissed off, uh, a little more energetic for this rant. So anyway, guys, uh, you know that your, your lonely... Uh, your lonely doomer Airbnb host. I have spent the last four fucking nights uh, entertaining all of these couples in love. I, I have, you know, been hosting four of these little lovebird couples uh, all uh, all fucking weekend while I've been sitting here dying of heartbreak. Well, this this last couple just left, and I, and, and this is the uh, who I'm going to be talking about in the ramp. But this is the main thing I forgot to do is uh, before I forget, I just uh, I noticed that. I'm getting some reviews. I'm getting some reviews here on Airbnb, uh, and these are real reviews. You know, they're not they're not fake. So uh, I had, I guess I did not know how to find my reviews until now. Oh, good Lord, let me uh, put the old man. All right. So, this is from uh, one of these one of these young couples <clears throat> who stayed in the tiny house in the in the Sancho Sheraton. Take it away, Jennifer. How was your stay at Bugs in a Jar? <clears throat> as soon as my partner and I, yes, as soon as my partner and I showed up here. We felt like we had entered a magical place, a hidden oasis in the forest. We were greeted by the friendliest, fluffy angel of a dog named Sancho. He is a tiny, white chihuahua mix. Sam is very kind and accommodating and will make you feel at home. He gave us fresh vegetables picked that day from his garden. We made a delicious meal with them on the grill and ate by the fire. The tiny house is charming and the campsites are secluded and beautiful. This is a place to relax and unwind in the presence of nature. If you plan on having a raging party or being loud and rowdy. Look elsewhere. We would 100% stay here again. My response from Sam to Jennifer. All shucks, you are too kind. Come back and see Sancho and me anytime. P.S. Folks are welcome to rent the whole place for loud 
rowdy, raging parties, too. Okay, this was uh, the review from this Indian couple. This was Mithron and his wife. <clears throat> Thanks to Sam for building this beautiful tiny house. We loved this place and our stay. A wonderful new experience. Just behind the tiny house, the creek, birds, the sound of water at the best. Sam is one of the best hosts I have ever met. Very kind and helpful. Then I didn't even realize, I had never even seen these other ones. Sam's Farm is a nice place to camp in a solitary setting or to experience a bit more community. Hmm, really nice environs. How about from Aurora? Beautiful and peaceful place. Hosts are very polite and helpful. I wasn't here. That was talking about Rob and Donna. How about from Laura? Sam is awesome. And this location is beautiful. And of course, I had to hear from, uh, you know, the, the video file who lived in the Maggie May uh, and then tried to get a hundred dollar refund because he left early and I refused to give him the hundred dollars. His review. It was pretty good. Thanks. Yes. The Maggie May was pretty good. Thank you, brother, for uh, not getting airing our dirty laundry. But anyway, uh, so the rant I just had and will have all over again is, is, is I, I, I just have to get this off my chest about... What do you want to do? What, are you running off to uh, get your chippies or what? So anyway, uh, this couple reserved, they actually reserved the tiny house uh, a couple of weeks ago. So I have been, you know, communicating, emailing and whatnot with the woman who we will, uh, let's call her Lulu, uh, with the woman, and it was clear by her photo and, and whatnot that she was this hottie. And uh, actually, in person, she's even hotter than her photo. So she was this, uh, from California, this couple coming out here from California had enough of that bullshit. Um... Uh, and apparently, they were planning to settle like Sancho and I at one time in Oregon. They went up there and looked around Oregon, not sure if it had to do with the wildfires. But anyway, they, uh, they passed on the Pacific Northwest, and they're taking the advice of some sort of Buddhist teacher or something, has some kind of ashram or something up here. So their Buddhist teacher has led them to the Finger Lakes. And so I'm looking at this, uh, at this little hottie and uh, figuring, well, she's probably in her mid-30s. Um, so I just assumed that her partner uh, was, was probably about her same age. Well, they get here just before dark last night. And, uh, well, it turns out, uh, as I say, that this little hottie, and she is the one with the money, not the dude. She is the one with the moolah to, uh, to buy this place. Uh, she's in, you know, as I figured, I'm guessing, that's, that's, I figure she's 35. Well, the dude is not 35. Th th this motherfucker is about my age. All right, the son of a bitch is about my age, and what he is is one of these absolutely, uh, you know, vomit-inducing bliss ninnies. One of these little California, you know, West Coast beautiful people. 
I guess they met at an ecstatic dance. Uh, the two of them met at an ecstatic dance and how they met was is that Lulu, you know, kind of like, uh, you know, Guy and Pauline. Lulu is into polyamory, meaning uh, that, that Lulu plays the field. And so he was, this, this was a funny story. Uh, when I asked uh, how they met, so at an ecstatic dance that another woman was giving Lulu her number, you know, so she and Lulu could get together after the dance at some point. And uh, Billy Bob, the, the, this little uh, this little predator, this little uh, sexual predator, uh, he was listening in. And, and, and kind of as a joke, uh, you know, say, can I get that number too? And that's how we got her number. That's how they met. Was that at an ecstatic dance, uh, him, him stealing a, a number uh, to horn in, uh, to put it mildly, on, uh, uh, on Lulu's polyamorous date with another woman. I mean, with a beginning like that, so anyway, I don't know how long they've been together. So anyway, this, this guy, and, and he fully admits, uh, the, the dude fully understands uh, what a gift he has received from the universe, uh, having Lulu dumped in his lap. But I didn't understand, you know, obviously, I mean, just meeting the guy, uh, what a fucking little, uh, you know, a male version of a Fliberty gibbet is. So uh, I see him unpacking a ukulele. I said, oh, I, I said, so you're a musician. And uh, he, he said, yeah, well, I play ukulele. And I said, well, I play harmonica. I said, why don't we, uh, you feel like. Uh, doing some tunes and he said sure so we go out and build a fire it's right at dark get a nice fire going well they're up here looking for real estate so Lulu uh, she retires to the Maggie May they were gonna rent the the tiny house but the bed was too small uh, so they moved into the Maggie May so she retires unfortunately we lose Lulu at the very beginning she goes back to the camper, you know, to do some real estate business. And so leaving me and Billy Bob um, together, just the two of us, uh, out by the fire. So I go get my harmonicas and I ask him, can I make him a margarita? You know, I was going to make a drink. And he goes, well, he goes, I don't do alcohol, but he goes, if you have any cannabis uh, refreshment. I would really appreciate that. And I said, well, I don't have anything to smoke. I said, but I do have some of this tincture that my, uh, that my sister made. And uh, if, you want a, if you want a shot of that. So this was my sister's homemade, you know, where she soaks her homegrown in Bacardi 51. I think she soaks it for four months and makes this little tincture. So I'll go and make him a little shot glass. I go make my drink and I bring him out a little shot of this, uh, of this cannabis tincture. And here was my first clue about where my evening was going to go. And uh, so he, he, he holds up, you know, he, he holds the little, the, the shot glass of this Bacardi 51 and, and weed and he starts doing this over the top he's standing he holds it over the fire and starts going and, and then he, he takes his finger and he and he dips his finger in the in the top of the shot glass and goes blink and 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 you know offering pachamama 
you know, the um, Mother Earth, Gaia, giving her one drop of his shot glass. Uh, so he, he knocks back his shot glass of tincture, and I'm thinking, oh my God, Hambone, uh, what have you gotten yourself into? And uh, I was having flashbacks of living in Santa Cruz, California. Uh, like, ah, shit, uh, here we go. <clears throat> so we sit down and he gets out his ukulele and starts playing. I mean, this is stuff that he had written. I, I mean, this absolute, I mean, awful shit. Uh, you know, the, 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 you know, this goddamn bliss ninny shit that I'm talking about. And I'm thinking, how the hell did uh, you get sucked into this hambone? So, uh, in, anyway, the, uh, the musical session didn't last very long. There was, there was clearly no connection uh, on the musical front. So we just started, you know, talking. So, of course, he has to tell me about his, uh, <clears throat> I can't remember the word he used, whether it was brood or clutch. Maybe it was coven, but I guess he has a bunch of daughters, which he calls his goddesses. And that, uh, you, you know, the lights of his life are his goddesses. Uh, his his young goddesses, the gift that he was able to bring to uh, I guess Pachamama was his bunch of was his bunch of young daughters. He asked me if I had ever experienced the joys of fatherhood, and uh, I, I said, "Here is my uh, my fur baby, right here in my lap," and he did like Sancho Panza, but how could he not have? <clears throat> so anyway. It was a wide-ranging discussion, and and guys, I I I I deserved an Academy Award for keeping my Doomer mouth shut, but there was a couple of times that it just overflowed, and uh, so at some point in the conversation, <coughs> we bring up hum humans discovering metal. Uh, metallurgy or whatever the word was that he used for it, uh, how great it was for the evolution of humanity and assumedly the planet. Uh, when humans discovered metal, fortunately, surprisingly, you know, since we were sitting around a fire, we didn't get to talk about what a great uh, evolutionary leap it was for the planet when humans discovered fire. Uh, somehow we missed that chapter, but um, so somehow the invention of metal comes up and he starts waxing poetic on uh, how the uh, invention of metal what was good for humanity and the planet and, and, I, and I couldn't help myself. I, I, I just laughed and I, and I said, yeah, and I said, that's really where uh, all hell broke loose on the planet. And, he, and he's like, what? You know, this absolute confused look. And, uh, it, and I immediately uh, thought of my number one favorite passage from, uh, from uh, Don Quixote. I've read it several times here. I might have to read that passage again where uh, Don Quixote, uh, he, he and Sancho uh, are sitting under the oak trees uh, roasting acorns from the tree while the, this group of goddards, these goat herders, are, are getting drunk with Sancho Panza. Uh, around the fire while Don Quixote is waxing philosophically how it was the invention of the plow. This was in 1500 that Don Quixote wrote this, how it was the invention of the plow was the beginning of the end uh, for humanity, you know, harking back to the days before the invention of the plow before the plowshares 
what did he say, rent the bosom of our first mother. I think was the something and something of the quote about before the plowshares rent the bosom of our first mother, meaning Pachamama, and fucked everything up. Uh, I did not share. Uh, now I, I will give uh, give Billy Bob some credit. He knew the Sancho Panza reference. This man. Uh, had read Don Quixote. He was a fan of Cervantes, but apparently Cervantes' message that it was the fucking invention of metal, where this fucking, uh, the human race in this planet started going down the fucking toilet right over his his little uh, his little blistening he had, and he goes, you know, so he wanted to me to explain what I meant uh, by that comment, and, uh, and and I said, well, Billy Bob, I said, okay, I said, so on Monday, humans invent metal, on Tuesday, they turn their new invention in, in, into spears and swords, and on Wednesday, uh, they turn their swords into plowshares, and, and that was really the beginning uh, of the end uh, with the, the invention of the plow. <clears throat> he has no fucking comprehension what I am talking about. How, how the invention of the plow was a bad thing. You know, it, it, it allowed humanity, it freed up humanity, uh, you, you know, from the toil uh, of farming, you know, to where civilization, since everyone wasn't out digging in the dirt with sticks, uh, that, that how could you view uh, freeing humanity from toiling in the soil as a bad thing? So uh, I decided to drop it. Uh, I don't know where the conversation went. This went on for like two hours. Uh, Billy Bob and I sitting around the fire. I know there was the usual talk about space aliens, uh, about anti-gravity being a good thing for humanity. But of course, <clears throat> We got in, obviously, guys, uh, we got into the whole discussion of free energy, where, you know, in talking about humans being on the cusp of rediscovering free energy. Of course, you know, he's one of these people saying that humans used to have access, you've heard the theory that humans obviously, you know, with the pyramids and all the, you've heard this talk, that clearly humanity at one point, probably before the flood, you know, before Atlantis went underwater, clearly humanity had free energy available to us and we had created this global utopian society, I guess, uh, based in Atlantis or, or, or wherever the fuck. And, and then, of course, the Great Flood came and the, the bad guys, the blue meanies, have been holding free energy to, them, to themselves. But we are on the cusp that humanity is on the cusp of rediscovering this free energy. And I just could not help myself. And, and I cracked up again, and, and I said, yeah. Uh, and I said, at that point, dude, uh, we, you know, the, the planet is truly fucked. And it, 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 again, you can imagine the uncomprehending look I, I, I got from, I mean, the, the, he looked like, you know, that I had just blast, uh, that, you know, blasphemed his God, his God of, uh, that he worshipped of free energy, and, and, and just like, huh? 
I, I, what was that comment supposed to mean, Sam? And, 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 and I said, brother, uh, I, I said, very few people understand this. I said, the worst thing that could happen to this planet. I said, imagine, uh, I, I said, look at what we've done to this planet with these, with these inefficient energy sources. Uh, I, I, I said, imagine what it's going to look like when 8 billion uh, of these clueless <clears throat> naked apes get their hands on an unlimited supply of the uh, of free, literally free energy <coughs> you know with an EREOI of uh, of zero where you don't have to invest in inter- any energy to get energy back as I said they're going to grab hold of this and, and it is going to be a feeding frenzy uh, uh, you know the planet eaters uh, are going to go on an absolute feeding frenzy with this, with nothing holding them back. I said it's the it, it's the energy inefficiency, even of fossil fuels, uh, that it is the inefficiency of all of these energy systems that we have invented that have been holding us back. And uh, I, I, I said it would be the worst thing uh, that we could do to this planet. And, and the guy is looking at me like I have completely fucking lost my mind. Okay. Uh, he thinks uh, I am clearly from another planet. <clears throat> and he goes, well, Sam, that will never happen because it won't be allowed to happen. And, 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 and then I probably gave him the look that he had just given me, and I said, oh, really? It won't be allowed to happen. And, and I said, what exactly? I said, okay, explain yourself. And he said, well, <clears throat> this rediscovery of, of free energy, I guess what it's going to take us back to is the utopian state that uh, the global community used to live in before the big flood or whatever brought down Atlantis, that we're going, that the invention or reinvention, whatever you want to call it, of this mythical free energy is going to come he didn't actually say the heart chakra, but that's what he was implying, that it is, it is Pachamama energy. It is the energy of the earth herself that is going to be gifted to humanity that this clean, green, limitless, free energy is going to be a gift from Mother Earth to her children, and it will be a violation of natural law for the children of Pachamama to use that energy against her, that it will only be able to create, you know, I guess, a utopian society, or, or some, and, and guys, Somehow, somehow, I managed to keep my mouth shut and, and not get out of my chair and walk over and slap this clueless fucking moron Bliss Ninny across the face. So I just, uh, I just turned the conversation back to real estate and, uh, you know, finding out what his, you know, what his vision uh, what his utopian vision uh, that he was trying to create up here in the Finger Lakes, uh, you know, him telling me about his Buddhist teacher and whatnot up here, and that what he and Lulu hoped to do was to create a yoga retreat. Create a yoga retreat, uh, and I could not resist... Uh, asking him the definition of yoga. 
his definition of yoga was sitting up straight. Sitting up straight was the definition of yoga. So uh, anyway, I just wished uh, I, I just wished Billy Bob and Lulu luck in creating a yoga retreat uh, here in the Finger Lakes of New York. And I looked forward to being their neighbor. So uh, I'm really looking forward to the to the uh, review I get from Billy Bob and uh, and Lulu. But anyway, I'm sitting over here looking at the you know talking about Buddhism. I was talking to him about the uh, the chop wood and carry water part of you know we were we were eating my homegrown tomatoes while we were having this. I had sliced up some of these absolutely delicious uh, organic homegrown tomatoes and uh, that's what I told in my understanding of Buddhism. Uh, there was a whole lot of uh, chopping wood and carrying water that uh, people tended to forget about that part. Uh, but anyway, I sh I'm looking at that Silver Queen corn, those 2,000 ears of Silver Queen corn. So I need to wrap this rat up and go uh, figure out how close to harvest my Silver Queen corn is. And I highly suggest you get out there and harvest your Silver Queen corn and create your yoga community. <clears throat> while you still can. Let's see if I can uh, manage not to erase this video. Bye guys.